Oh, look, it's clear outside. I should really be getting some imaging in. But it's so cold and dark outside, and I don't know if my camera batteries are charged. Wait, do I even have enough storage space to offload my data to? I don't want to drag all of my gear outside. That was me before I watched this video. And this is me now. And in this video, I'm going to share 10 different accessories that I have found to make my life a lot easier as an astrophotographer. I'm Sarah Matthews, and as always, grab a snack and let's jump into it. This piece of equipment is really helpful for many things, and they are Allen wrenches, or Allen keys, hex wrenches, hex keys, whatever you'd like to call them. So in your time doing astrophotography, it's very likely that you're going to be mounting your mount head to your tripod, trying to attach some rings to the top of your telescope, et cetera, et cetera. So I highly recommend having a set of both metric and standard size Allen keys with ball ends because they're really nice for getting into awkward places. I like these sets especially because, I mean, even though other pieces of equipment may come with some of the Allen keys that you would need, just being able to have an Allen key set for both metric and standard is really nice. Most pieces of equipment in astrophotography take metric style Allen keys, but every once in a while you will come across pieces of equipment that require the standard. So yeah, that's that. Okay, I have a very fun bag of things. We have lots of different adapters and spacers. Adapters and spacers are really nice for a couple of different reasons. For one, if you ever want to attach your DSLR or mirrorless camera to your telescope in a prime focus method, by that I mean where we're just using the camera's sensor size and the focal length of the telescope to give you your field of view, then I highly recommend having some sort of lens mount adapter like this to attach to the front of your telescope and then having a nose piece of some sort um, if it does require a nose piece connection. Um, and if it doesn't, then you can just attach it directly to your telescope's focuser. Also, it's really nice to be able to have additional spacers like these here or adapters, which will help you to get the right back focus when you are connecting your other types of cameras like this. This is a dedicated astronomy camera and you are connecting it to the back of your telescope or to your focuser, or if you are attaching it to a corrective element of some kind, like a field flattener, field flattener reducer, and a coma corrector, for example, because you really want to make sure that you have the right back focus just in general. So I just recommend having different types of adapters on hand. They usually come in millimeter sizes of 42 millimeters, 48 millimeters, 54 millimeters, and you just wanna make sure that you have the right one or the right series of them to connect everything together. And just be cognizant of the threading that it has. Usually the pitch thread is going to be 0 0.75 or one, but more so the former. And uh, you just wanna be cognizant as well of if it's going to be male to male or male to female, so on and so forth. <laughs> that was thunder. On that note about adapters and spacers and trying to achieve the correct back focus for our telescope and camera or corrective lens and camera, we have calipers, digital calipers. Um, so you can measure in a variety of different ways and it's going to, to allow you to measure in millimeters, inches. You really wanna get the precise back focus with a lot of different things. And they're also just nice to have around the house for other house projects. And just if you're like an engineer or an architect, you probably already have some of these. So yeah, I would definitely recommend getting yourself one of these along with some extra batteries like this because sometimes the batteries die, sadly. Nothing says I have a warm heart like having warm hands. 
Except my mom would always say, cold hands, warm heart, because I think she was trying to make me feel better about having bad circulation as a child. No matter the case, these are really nice because most likely if you're doing any type of astrophotography, whether it is wide field astrophotography of landscapes, or if you are doing any sort of deep space astrophotography, or even planetary or lunar, chances are you're going to be in the cold at some point and you need your appendages to do anything uh, worthwhile basically. So I would definitely get some of these hand warmers because they're awesome and reusable and rechargeable. Another use case for them is using them as a hot potato if you wanted to put some sort of potato type skin around them. Why you would do that, I'm not sure, but more importantly, when it's turned off, it does function as a pet rock. But you are able to charge them with a little USB-C to USB-2. And it's like this, which is pretty rad. Also, it is in my non-professional opinion that you should probably get two of them just in the off chance that you have two hands. On that note about user experience outside as an astrophotographer, or even inside if you are feeling especially nerdy, I would highly recommend getting yourself one of these bad boys. Actually, this one doesn't work. Huh? Oh, it does. Okay, cool. All right. Okay. All right. So, yeah. So if you don't already have a headlamp, I would definitely invest in one of them because not only are they fairly inexpensive, but they are really nice because they help you avoid running into your tripod and having to repolar align your mount, um, which is always probably one of the sadder moments of any astrophotographer's journey. And also using a red headlight like this, as opposed to your cell phone's flashlight or some other sort of white light of some kind, whilst outside with other astrophotographers or astronomers. Um, it's just something that's very courteous to do because they're trying to keep their night vision and you should also try to keep your night vision. On average, it takes about 20 minutes for your eyes to adjust and it can also take longer. So highly recommend a red headlight for safety and minimizing frustration and just out of courtesy. Something else that all astrophotographers and just really any living organism will come to experience at some point in their lives is dust. And in that case, especially in the context of astrophotography or astronomy, I would really recommend getting a dust blower. This is a dust blower. I highly recommend having one of these in your arsenal because yeah, of just the high likelihood that you're going to have some sort of dust particle or a bunch of dust particles on your telescope, your camera lens, your filters, your camera sensor. And before you ever touch your camera sensor or your filters or your telescope's lenses, whether they're glass lenses or mirrors, before you actually get in there with some sort of cloth, please use a dust blower first. There are different ways to clean different types of glass and different types of mirrors, and it's not always straightforward, and you're just gonna save yourself a lot of heartache by just trying to blow the dust off first. It does help if you flip things upside down and blow upwards, and yeah, just really great tool to have. Okay, so this next item is not meant to insult anybody because I really don't think anybody's dumb and therefore I'm not sure why they call these dummy batteries and there is definitely another word for them. Hold on, my cat needs to get out. But if you're going to be imaging all night using a DSLR or mirrorless camera, definitely get yourself a dummy battery instead of having to rely on camera batteries and trying to switch them out. This is gonna be especially true if you're taking long exposures or if you are trying to take star trails, for example, it's just really nice to have one of these plugged in to your camera instead of having to have your batteries die and being really sad about it. So you of course would just need to remove the battery and you would need to get a dummy battery that was going to work with your specific camera model. So just be mindful of that. But then take the dummy battery
and then close it and then connect the power adapter to this. So ideally you would have some sort of portable uh, power source of some kind or you would be at home imaging. But on that note of additional power sources, let's get into the next item. Behold, a portable power supply contained in this little device here. Now, there are tons of different options out there for you to choose from, but just make sure that you have one that's going to accommodate your setup. Um, this does give you so much more flexibility to image at dark sites if you plan to travel a lot with your setup. And even if you do image from home and maybe you don't have the reach to AC power at, at your house, just get yourself one of these. So I did use this one for the total solar eclipse. I did run from before first contact all the way till the end of fourth contact. And honestly, it did awesome. I had two rigs going, but I really could have used just one of these batteries because it only went down to like, I don't know, it didn't even reach 90% and that was imaging for a very long time. So like I said, just make sure that you get a power supply that's going to work for your setup. This next item is really great for after you're done imaging and you have all this data and you're like, where do I put all this data? Because regardless if you are imaging the moon with high frame rate video or the planets or the sun or taking multiple long exposures and calibration frames, you're going to need somewhere to put all of that data. And an external SSD like this is a great option. Also, another great reason to have one of these is that maybe you don't have enough working memory on your computer while you are pre-processing or post-processing your data in something like Serial. Using one of these devices will allow you to use one of those programs because of the working memory. Now, if you want to be doubly safe when it comes to backing up your data, you can put your data on one of these and then back up the data on some sort of cloud account services. The next item on our list is truly a game changer. And these are filters. So whether you are trying to image deep space objects in a very light polluted area, or if you are trying to image the moon or planets, it's really nice having different types of filters to image whatever type of celestial body that it is you're imaging. And depending on what type of surrounding light issues that you may have. And if you're imaging something like Saturn, you might want to get a CH4 filter. Now, if you're going to be imaging something like the Orion Nebula or the Horsehead Nebula or other types of emission nebulae or planetary nebulae like the Dumbbell Nebula here, or even a supernova remnant like this dude here, I would also recommend looking into some sort of narrowband filter, whether it is a single or dual narrowband filter or even a multi-narrowband filter. These are going to be great for cutting down light pollution because they're only letting in a very specific wavelength or wavelengths of light, which helps to omit light pollution generally. Um, but they're also going to increase the amount of contrast and clarity that you get in your images. And it's really just going to give you some extra punch in your images. <clears throat> Sorry, I was coughing. Now, if you find yourself wanting to image broadband targets like galaxies or reflection nebulae in a bunch of light pollution, or I guess just really any deep space object of any kind, you might want to look into something like this filter. This is the Antlia tri-band filter and it works great. I'm obviously not going into filters in exhaustive detail. Whatever you're imaging and the location that you're at is going to inform what type of filter you should be using. Also what camera uh, you're using as well. So, okay. Now, if you were counting along, that equals 10, but there is an encore section. And by that, I mean, we have three additional bonus items for us to go over. And that first item, that first bonus item are these. Now, you probably have a lot of cables or at some point you definitely will. And many would recommend managing those cables because it will help your setup to run a lot more smoothly. And for those who really care about the aesthetics, just getting your cable management under control is kind of a good thing. 
Now, if you're anything like me and you're not a 10 out of 10 in cable management, look into using these little clips to manage your cables. They are really easy to use. I find that they're a lot easier to use than Velcro straps like this. And also you can share them amongst other members of your household, which I think is a positive thing. Having inner strength, I think, is a commendable trait to have. So even when your physical strength isn't up to par because of things that honestly are just impossible to detach from one another otherwise, these will be your friend and these are rubber strap wrenches. And it provides maximum value. Now, at some point in your astrophotography journey, if it hasn't already happened before, you're gonna find yourself having to detach. These types of adapters are from one another in all likelihood, and oftentimes they are nearly impossible. And in the past, I've had to use different types of wrenches with tape assembled on the inside of the wrench to try to not uh, muck up the outer shell or the outer finishing of the adapter, but um, now, um, <clears throat> now I'm more mature and wiser in my adventures. In any case, if you ever find yourself not being able to detach these, they're basically like, it's like trying to take the sword out of the stone, if you guys are familiar with that story, but using these, you'll be able to do that. Now our next and final accessory on our list here is a really great childhood favorite, but I have found that it does have many purposes as an adult. Now I don't have it in here because it's really large, but that is a wagon. And if you find yourself ever having to take all of your gear outside on your lawn somewhere further away than you would prefer to have to take everything out, especially in two trips and you just want to settle it in one trip, highly recommend getting a wagon. And if you're traveling to a dark site, and again, you only wanna take one trip or so, definitely get a wagon. It will also help you to spare your back and other body parts from uh, any sort of strenuous activity. Also, they're just really fun, but yeah. I hope all this was helpful. These accessories really have been game changers for me along my astrophotography journey. It took me a while to narrow down this list, and this is certainly not an exhaustive list, but yeah, I think these will be very helpful for you, whether you are a beginner or you're more of an experienced imager. I hope this is helpful. <laughs> if you liked this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing to the channel. And if you'd like to uh, support this channel further, please consider becoming a patron over on my Patreon page. I do share image files for you to process as well as ad free content. And yeah, you can also make recommendations for videos over there. Okay guys, thank you so much. And until the next video, I hope you all have clear skies.